Hello everyone, welcome to Neon 10 Productions and it's the last of the reactions for the kill counts of the critters done by um, the meat and uh, yeah um, the three first were cool the third one was slow but had cool critter kills the fourth one was a disappointing mess let's see what comes from this one and yeah um the only good thing about the fourth one was brad Dourif. let's be honest okay and the critters of course they're always the highlights <laughs> but anyway uh but Again, there were not that many, and like they said, uh, budget problem. So, yeah. Uh, so let's see with this one where this is go with the series goes. Um, okay, so let's start this reaction in three, two, one, go. Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm Zorin, all out of ball jokes Gavoyich, and today we finish up everything- Don't feel like you've done that many. He, he, he did kinda... Uh, warned us at the beginning, but he didn't do that many ball jokes within the- Oh, I just got done, didn't, didn't cut them, but- Feel like I would ask. I'm willing to cover on the Critters franchise with Critters Attack, released in 2019. It took 27 years to get new Critters content. Aside from this amazing Critters Bounty Hunter short film by the director of Thanks Killing 3, Jordan Downey. No, don't say his name! Wait, did somebody just say my name? Guess it's time to write Thanks Killing 4. <laughs> no! <laughs> He's really a nice guy. He seems like it. Even though it took so long, when the critter quills rain, they Rip James. Before, and we got two unrelated projects in 2019. First, there was this feature-length film, Critters Attack, and then there was the Go 90 turned Shutter TV series, Critters: A New Binge, which I would burn out of my memory if I could. Does anyone have a Men in Black neuralizer? Yeah, that'll work too. Oh, what are we talking about, Gremlins? Critters Attack is a quasi-reboot with new characters, a new setting, and new critter designs. Now I say quasi okay. because Dee Wallace does make a return, but it's not entirely clear who she is. Her character's named Aunt Dee, but in an interview she said she was reprising the role of Helen Brown from the first film, and that the name change was for legal reasons. What a crock. The fifth Critters film features a whole new team behind the camera. It was written by Scott Lobdell, whose writing was previously seen on the kill count in Happy Death Days 1 and 2. Directing duties fell upon Bobby Miller, best known for writing and directing the horror comedy The Cleanse, that had its own little puppet in it. Look at that little cute, disgusting thing. Yeah. The shoot for Critters Attack, much like Critters 2, was an ambitious one. They tell you not to work with kids, puppets, shoot at night, and we did everything. As for the Critters themselves, the Kyoto Brothers did not return to- And that's the second time for them. Uh, they, they said the same thing for the first sequel due to the low budget. But having gotten their start in low budget films, they were happy to hand off the opportunity to someone else. Give it to the new guys on the block who are, who will work really hard, give it the best they can because for them it's an opportunity to do something because work gets work. Those new guys and gals were Amazing Ape Productions, a Canadian based company started by Werner Pretorius, hey. whose credits include Deadpool 2, Robertson. Peacemaker, and a personal favorite, the Snowpiercer TV show. And I wanted to say I 100% admire the commitment and work from the production and FX crew who gave this movie their all, even in the most difficult of circumstances. We had to bury three puppeteers underground. They would have to stay underground for the entire time that we were shooting. The movie's low budget also caused production to move to South Africa to take advantage of tax breaks, much like Tremors 5 and 6. Though thankfully, there's no sand for snow. Can you just pretend it's snow for me? Let me go with it. 
The cast is a mix of American and South African actors, and the main story follows a girl named Drea whose babysitting gig gets interrupted by a new Critters invasion. Most of the previous films had kids in lead roles with some success. But mm -hmm. Critter's Attack feels like an early 90s family-friendly moonbeam entertainment film. Kind of like Prehysteria, but with more gore thrown in. The end result is a tone that's just... it's just off. The characters feel just a bit broad and cartoonish. And yes, while the original films definitely had cartoony elements, its characters still acted like real people. I mean, this one has a guy who tries to impress Drea with a mixtape of bagpipe oh. music. You're... you're hitting it. You're really hitting it. It even goes full gremlins this time around by introducing a good critter named Bianca. Not, not gremlins. It's all pretty hokey and a lot of the jokes are crappy, but in its favor, <laughs> it's the first R-rated critters movie and they make the most of that rating by upping the gore with lots of practical effects. Will the first R-rated critters give us the blood we should only expect when accompanied by a parent or guardian? Let's find out and get to the kills. The movie begins in Somewheresville, USA, where a shooting star lands on a nearby fog machine. A late night sushi delivery guy named Kevin sees it while paying subtle homage to Charlie from the first film. At least, you know, if being a skinny dude on a bicycle counts as homage. Kevin follows the meteorite to discover it's actually a generic spaceship with a far too small hole for this red-eyed creature to come out of. But that doesn't stop it from escaping and killing the sushi man by pulling him off screen. If only he'd been skilled in the art of unagi. The next day, we see Kevin's body moving, but I didn't mess up putting him on the count. It's just some critter babies hatching out of his dead body. I guess this movie's crites skip the nonsensical multiplying egg phase and just hatch right out of their host. Hmm, seems familiar. The okay. Proud Papa Balroni watches his little meatballs from afar. Ah, they grow up so fast. Literally! As they are now full grown and ready for snackies. Director Bobby Miller Save money. knew that they had to keep the critters practical. I think fans of the movies would have shot me in the street if we came out with CGI critters. Oh, what? No, no, I totally wouldn't have done that. Where, where put the gun down, put the gun down. <laughs> The new Critter Puppets were designed by Werner Bertorz okay, okay. of Amazing Ape Studios. And he tried to stay close to the look of the first film. They're gnarly, they're animal-like, they're still a little scary, and then as the series goes, they get a little more cartoonish. These creatures use the same combination of hand puppets and remote control animatronics, but do have one improvement. We actually ended up completely separating the puppets' heads from their bodies just so we could get that range of movement that we wanted. Personally, the design looks a little off to me, kind of like tiny gorillas with their noses, but I guess that's the amazing ape influence. Still, damned impressive puppetry. Kevin's co-worker at this strip mall I sushi stop the... is Drea, who spent last night crying over a rejection. I tried to find um, models to get to do my thumbnails, but I couldn't find one uh, for MMD or any I guess free model uh, letter from Leroy Ka so yeah uh, and the only thing I could find was were um, pictures I guess and most of them I guess came from this movie because I recognize the, the design of the college that's the school her mom went to briefly before having to drop out to give birth to her Drea wants to honor her mom by attending since she died two years ago in a car accident because of that Drea lives with her uncle Sheriff Lou who's well-meaning but has a hard time relating to her and her 12 year old brother Philip who's obsessed with aliens as proven when he uses this Disneyland map to tell his uncle where they may have landed last night were they butt naked? You know, if they're butt naked, it's quite funny, eh? I mean, alien boobies are funny, especially if there's three of them. Drea has to deliver a sushi order to Leroy's we'll campus, and after taking a moment to mourn her mom, she gets out to search for literally anyone. Why? Why is this college campus empty? I, I don't understand how you got rejected. Admissions seem to be low. Eventually, a guy shows up looking, James said to say, straight out of Imperium? Did I say that right? I, I don't know what that means. Drea's a... Wrestling reference. 
<laughs> immediately smitten with this strong chin chappy and his dimples you could lose your keys in. This all-American Gregory Sachs is played by all South African actor Tristan De Beer. Drea drinks in De Beer like she's at a De Beers game until she runs into an old friend named Mandy who's here to provide awkward hugs and receive clunky exposition. Well, you got into our dream school and I didn't. Since Mandy feels bad for Drea, she tells her about a job babysitting a professor's kids. Drea doesn't want to join the babysitter's club at first, but since it might help her get admitted to the college, she relents and takes the job. And now there's a guy camping in the woods. All right, well, this is Outdoor Dougie, a self-styled influencer who we met earlier at the sushi restaurant. I just got some new merch for my online store. Outdoor Dougie Stress Ball. What kind of shameless person plugs their merch like that? <laughs> no, no, not now, not now. Dougie is distracted by this clever critter and attacked from the side before quickly being dragged off screen. Though thankfully we do get to see the aftermath of the kill as they chow down and make more critter babies. Hey, I'm Doug and I'm out of here. This kill was surprisingly shot during the day with three puppeteers buried under a plywood platform covered in leaves. Good Lord, puppeteers are badasses. I salute you. Somewhere else in America, we meet Dee Wallace's character who lives in a house of furry devils. Now, whether she's Helen Brown or a bounty hunter or, you know, someone who once tried to sex up Dean Winchester, we at least know she's some kind of high-tech secret spy. A generic movie computer tells her that Krites have landed again, so she heads out to hunt. You know, after leaving her cats with a sitter, of course. Which one needs the <laughs> insulin shot? Little Herrick. Well, that's a nice little nod to the director of the first critters, Stephen Herrick. All right, Dee, see you later, alligator to the mutation. Ah, there's no time for legacy characters anyway. We've got new characters to meet, like Ranger Bob, previously seen on the kill count in Leprechaun Returns. While bird watching, he gets burgle cutted. So he goes to clean up in one of those good old fashioned American outdoor showers. A nearby Krite makes its way up this apple box shower caddy and offers to be Ranger Bob's loofah. It then exfoliates the life out of the Ranger and Bob becomes a blob of blood. Bye there, buckaroo. The crates stick to the title with another critter's attack when they overpower Bob's fellow rangers, Jonathan and Carol. They're killed discreetly behind the blinds, but thank boo boo, we get to see this picnic of park rangers a little later. Looks like it's babysitting time as Drea arrives at Professor Lee. First, Yogi the Bear, our friend, and second, uh, kind of happy to see that there are more, already more kills than there were in every movie uh, till now. Casey's Chalet. The professor is ever so briefly played by Tanya Van Gron, previously seen on the kill count being forced to kiss Bert's son, Travis. Yuck, gross. Her kids that Dre is babysitting are precocious nerd Trissy, whom Philip has a crush on, which is why he agreed to tag along. And then there's little brother Jake, who only communicates via text. So what makes him different than other kids today, am I right? <laughs> oh, childhood is dead. Dr. Lacey escapes the room, but Should I do a comic and communicate reference? Nah. Before Drea's tournament of boredom can begin with a jab at the original film's release date. Anybody want to play a card game? What is this, 1986? To move things along, they go for a picnic in the woods, where Philip tries to find the nerve to talk to Trissy. Ugh, if only they had some common ground to bond over. Like, say, a woodland critter without the Christmas? What if it was an alien? That'd be cool. Aw, oh, she believes in aliens. You're in, Philip. Trissy notices this albino predator is injured and decides, if it bleeds, we can keep it. They then shove the puppet into her pack to make things easier on the effects crew. And it's there she shall stay for most of the film. On their way out of the woods, lead critter Scarface sees them taking the albino crate with them. And why wouldn't they? An unknown animal with a mouthful of sharp teeth would make a great pet. Just, you know, top-notch babysitting, Drea. Scarface calls for Bubbles 2.0 to follow them. At least I think he does, since this is the only Critters movie without any subtitles for the normally chatty Krites. Apparently, when it came to talking, the higher-ups at Warner Brothers said, Critters don't do that. You know, like they were talking about Batman and oral sex. In any case, Bubbles... You can see uh, they made their study. 
was sarcastic. Bubbles hitches a ride inside their trunk. The other critters follow in a shot my friend Ben helped with. No, not dead meat Ben. Dude bro party star Ben Geely. He helps supervise production and roll some critters before disappearing into a bush like Homer Simpson. <laughs> Unlike previous critters films, these crates aren't bowling balls covered in fur. Spoiler alert, they're basketballs covered in fur. The harem of globe chompers set their sights on a telephone worker with the best you want them to roll or bounce? That's a good idea. Fucking reaction to seeing critters. Okay. The telephone repairman with perfect timing is perfectly eaten by the critters in a very bloody kill. Another critter proves baldness is hereditary, presumably inheriting his scalp from the previous films. And it looks like its eyes are bigger than its own, as it chews on a wire that somehow takes out all the cell phone service in the area. Yeah, I don't think that's how cell phones work, but I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. This looks like a Muppet when he bite on... <laughs> And he bit on the, 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 the cable. The outage then leaves Jake without his only character trait. Hey Jake, what's the matter? No signal. I'm sorry, but did he put up his hoodie just so he could take it off with disgust a minute later? Oh Jake, you shitty little unizoomer. They patch up the albino critter and decide to give it a name. How about... Snowball? Simpsons did it! What about... Bianca? I like that. Bianca? Why they name her that? You got any ideas, dead meat researcher Emma? I got nothing. All good, because I can actually ask someone who worked on the film. My buddy, Dude Bro Ben. That's where the numbers are. He's over here. Hey, Ben. Hey, Norm. Yeah, I was wondering, why did they name the good critter Bianca? Well, you see, in Italian, Bianca has several meanings. It can mean pure, as in pure heart, like Bianca, our hero, or white, as in the color of her fur, which was chosen specifically to make her stand apart from the classic dark gray fur of the critters. Awesome. Bye, Ben. Bye, Zord. Philip wants to remember the moment the franchise jumped the shark, so he grabs his phone from the car. And when he hears a noise coming from the back, he decides to look in the tunk, snapping a quick pic that he shares with his sister. It's blurry, but I think it's an alien. Seriously? You you I know what he's gonna say. Uh, you doubt it, even though you're really, like, literally next to a one. So you should believe him. Dumbass. You don't believe him? You are standing right next to one! God, you're worse than Scully. Well, if the picture didn't convince Drea, the real thing should, as it bites into Jake's leg, who reacts by just kind of standing there and screaming and not, you know, fighting back in any way. Luckily, Drea kicks it away, which is something the Kyoto brothers always hated in the previous films. In this scene, they're fighting a critter and they kick it or they hit it, and you say, no, there's a hand there's in there. <laughs> they very easily make it out of the house, but Trissy wants to go back for Bianca, who, you know, can't move on her own for fear of revealing the puppeteer. Drea thinks Bianca could be dangerous, but Trissy's believing the strangest things and loving that alien. Drea then casually strolls back. Was he in Stranger Things? I think, well, maybe? Into the house to find bubbles, bubbles everywhere, and lots of globs of green. Which means we can add our first pincushion of a critter to the count, courtesy of Bianca herself. She grabs the white crate and gets back to the car, but I guess this is one of those cars from Blood Drive as it's leaking its plasma petrol, forcing them to walk to the police station to see their Uncle Lewis. They get there and fail to convince him of their alien experience since he refuses to look at the picture Philip took. Uh, hey guys, why don't you just try showing him the alien you have in Trissy's backpack? Come on! Well, with Unky too drunky and skeptical for them, the kids decide to go to South Park for help. We're just gonna go see Chef. Sure, he'll be able to help us. Well, as long as the Super Adventure Club hasn't gotten to him first. Meanwhile, Aunt D has been using her royalty-free PKE meter to track down Kreitz and add one to the bounty board with her Looks modified familiar. airsoft rifle. She finds the crashed spaceship and reveals that. Looks like she would catch ghost with this one. Bianca the Good Critter is did, actually did an that. alien queen. That's Hello, a, Your a, Highness. A reference hmm, to Ghostbusters. This joke seems familiar. In an attempt to redeem his character, Uncle Lewis looks into things by drunk driving to the Lacey house. But hey, who's gonna pull him over? He's the only cop in town. He sees indirect evidence of alien creatures, then direct evidence of them when they ambush him. The critters force him into his car, where he turns on the police siren and discovers a weakness that proves that these attackers might be from Mars. The high-pitched sound causes is this spirit Halloween crate to shake until it blows up in a great gloopy mess. 
The super intelligent creature beneath the car avoids destruction from this new plot device by chewing through the siren's power cord and then somehow climbing through the floor of the car where he sits in wait to eventually reenact an urban legend. Hey kid, how would you like to own your very own Bianca from the movie Critters Attack? Thanks. Oh, uh, sorry to bother you. Just take this. Bianca, coming soon to a garbage can near you. The kids arrive at Famous Sushi, where they have an easier time convincing Chef of the alien stuff. Probably because, you know, they show him the alien they're carrying around. He then asks them what their plan is. State police. That's quite a drive. Yeah, especially when you don't know what state this is supposed to be in. The replacement plan is to go to Leroy College and grab Professor Lacey's satellite phone, previously seen on the kill count calling Bert from not Canada. This endlessly spinning planning scene is interrupted by Uncle Lou's cop car crashing the dinner party. Looks like he's brought more party crashers with him, as critter balls roll around like toothy tumbleweeds. A couple of these munchies enjoy a Michael Myers midnight snack, until one pukes up a fresh puma, bro. Damn teeming. <laughs> I guess voice actor Steve Bloom liked that callback, since he's the one that voiced the critters this time around. He's probably known by most as Spike from Cowboy Bebop, but mm -hmm. I know him as Lugar Brink in LucasArts' point-and-click adventure, The Dig. Oh yeah, and he's freaking Wolverine. Drea channels Brad Brown and decides to go it alone, and it doesn't prove to be too much of an issue, as she finds Uncle Lewis napping after eating too many hot wings. Nope, wait, that's supposed to be blood. He wakes up to tell Drea some stuff about her mom, like he was responsible for her death, blah 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 blah. Oh, and the critters can be killed by high-pitched sounds. You know, like a symbiont. Unburdened and of no more use to this plot, Sheriff Uncle Lewis dies of his ridiculously long critter quill wounds. Drea easily makes her way to the delivery van past another kill. This guy that she doesn't even fake try to help. And weirdly enough, he's also the same extra seen here, but reused through editing that changes his hat and hoodie from this shot. Gotta save that money. We also see some unknown person's bones. And I know James doesn't like bastard skellies, but this one seems pretty fresh to me. <laughs> ahoy hoy. No bastard skellies. I see always no. Chef takes his sushi knives and slices this very inanimate critter's head. He knows how you work. Clean off. Ooh, yeah. Channeling Mrs. Menji's there. I can respect that. Treya gets in the van and Philip asks about Uncle Lewis. Treya. Um, remember something for me. What? High pitched sounds. Oh, seriously? Just gonna gloss over your uncle's death, not even address it. You know, why can't any of these people act like humans? Like me. I'm acting like a human right now. I'm really a bounty hunter. The kids make it to the college campus where Drea hopes to get a ring of so keys from Sean, a security okay. guard seen earlier who tried to woo her with bagpipe music. She then hears bagpipes in the distance that might be playing Celebrate by Cool and the Gang. And when she follows it, she finds Sean, deader than a Wrath of Khan Spock, with the bagpipe send off to boot. Damn, Drea, even critters got into this college that rejected you. Back in the car, Jake has his first line of the film. I think they keep finding us because of Bianca. Worth the wait. And that checks out. That critter that chose all the scar options for his avatar was sniffing around in the park earlier. Now they're still in need of the keys for Professor Lacey's office, so they head to the hall where Greg and Mandy are still decorating for this school's like, I don't know, 10 total students? Trey explains there be monsters on campus, but Mandy thinks it's a prank and leaves. Greg sticks around though to chat himself up and volunteer to go get Sean's keys. I can run incredibly fast. And my abs are so firm you could grate cheese on them! He runs off and his boast gets tested when a rumble heralds the return of the critter. You're gonna die, bitch. Ball from part two. You know what? Kudos to them for bringing that back. It goes after Greg and easily outpaces him, thus crushing the deeply dimpled Dasher. I'm sorry you had to see that. Come on. Yeah, that is too bad. If only the audience had gotten to see it. Unfortunately, our researcher Emma couldn't find a lot of behind the scenes info on this new critter ball. I tried. All good. I can just ask Dude Bro Ben again. Damn it, that's the number set. Over here. Over here. <laughs> hey, Zoran. I was wondering, how were you able to make the new critter ball? Well, that was pretty cool. So basically, the ball itself was a large inflatable membrane that had a skin of uh, critter faces stitched over it. So it was very lightweight, 10 feet tall, and you could just roll it down the street with a couple of guys. Huh. 
How did you get a close up of the Oh, right, right, right. So for the close up, where you see the critters moving on the ball, they made a horizontal wooden frame. Underneath, our entire puppeteer team got under there and would move the puppets while the camera actually panned in a close up over the moving screen. That is so cool. We got a pretty clever team. All right. Yeah. Bye, Ben. Bye, Zorn. That kill doesn't count. After a half-assed ins- It wasn't in the movie, so we- Inspirational speech delivered with all the intensity of a wet mop, they find their mom's office and quickly figure out the keypad code is Trissy's birthday. Oh good, so glad we spent the last 10 minutes on this Legend of Zelda Water Temple key quest. They get in and find another bastard skelly that- Ooh, actually maybe we should- No! No. All right, get it out of here, critter. They run off, but Bianca starts making weird noises. She's upset. She's not the only one. They leave the Yas Critter Queen behind so she can take care of her unfinished business with the other Krites. Then they run away, run away, past Mandy, who casually finds another student being eaten alive in the toilet paper room. Much like Drea, she fails to help him or act like an actual human. I'm so sorry. And thus, Leroy Student charges his way onto the count. A believer now, Mandy catches up with the rest of the cast. She and Drea squash their beef, then decide that instead of... I mean... I don't know, I will run away too. <laughs> Running, they're gonna stay and fight. They arm up inside a shed. Hmm, seems familiar. And although there is no battle axe for Mandy, there is an air horn, so they can take advantage of the super dumb, they hate high pitch noises plot point. Treya uses the air horn to blow up three static critters on the field before turning her attention to Scarface. Unfortunately, the horn wasn't filled aplenty and runs out of juice as more critters approach. The kids prepare for battle, as does Bianca with her Cyclops eyes and Wolverine claws. Thus kicking off a two location all out cry kid fight. <laughs> I count six for Bianca, who slices and dices them up like Julie Alien fries. The kids then bop their way through nine in these aftermath shots, and 15 in this shot, for a total of 30 critters killed to a sound-alike cover of Friends Forever. Scarface is the last crite standing. <laughs> Bianca is almost more uh, effective than Gizmo. <sighs> yeah. And finally remembers that they have quills. He shoots Philip in the neck and Dre in the arm, but unlike the previous films. Um. Fine? God damn it. You, okay, whatever. She takes the petered out quill and pushes it to the limited movement of Scarface's eye. It doesn't kill him, but this blast from a howling mad Aunt D's gun does. Having shown up in the 11th hour like Sally in the Texas Chainsaw requel. Drea, um. Mm -hmm. Let's hope that they won't uh, waste their character like the one, the other one. Immediately acts like Drea upon seeing someone helpful. Five against one, we can fight that bitch. You are literally the worst. Aunt Dee then introduces herself and sidesteps explaining her backstory by exploding two more crites like popcorn. She hands the nearest kid a gun, just like Sally in the Texas Chainsaw requel, and heads off to find the Queen Krite. She finds Bianca feasting on a pile of critters, and even though the lighting is nearly as dark as AVP Requiem, I'm gonna say there are six critters to add here. Three around her, one in the foreground, one in the background, and this decapitated one here. Before Aunt D can dethrone the Queen, Bianca saves her by shooting one more Krite between the eyes. Which then reminds D that some aliens can be good. The kids then wrap up all their character crap. Drea decides she doesn't need to attend Leroy College anymore, much like many other applicants. And Philip, oh Jesus man, take the thing out of your neck already. Does your neck hurt? Oh uh, no, you guys are gross. Ugh, amen to that Jake. And thankfully it looks like the movie's finally over. That is until the okay. critter ball arrives, which was once an exciting thing for me to experience. Kinda of bothers me too now. Can you remove it, please? Experience. It reverse Rockies down the stairs while Agent Dre and Agent K can I get my just, money now a, pause a, for dramatic effect before dog. blowing up the critter ball with After Effects tutorial flair. And honestly, cause I, I don't care anymore, I'm just gonna add the same 804 critters calculated for the last ball. Actually, there were some comments about the accuracy of my math that I'd like to address. I I, I don't care. But I made a chart. The movie then ends. Not the chart. It's with a real dumb joke, or you know whatever this is. I told you aliens are real. 
How many critters attacked my ability to enjoy this movie? Let's find out and get to the... Oh crap. Critter ball! <laughs> Bastard Skelly! <laughs> hey, I brought that from home. Yeah, but you see that running bulldog I did on him? I don't know what that means! Wrestling reference. That too. Well, 11 people died in Critters. Also, yes, that was cool. Attack. 10 men and one woman, proving the Critters don't attack equality in the workplace. With a runtime of 89 minutes, that gives us a kill on average every 8.1 minutes. As for the bounty board, we can add 851 Critters. 14 for Bianca, 1 for Chef, 1 for the Sheriff, and 835 for the kids and, you know, whatever Aunt D was giving us a critter kill on average every 6.2 seconds, which makes this the highest creature kill count. Not that that's a thing at all, but uh, hey, James doesn't have to be sad about this one because I'm already not happy about it. As for the franchise totals, we can add- um, This one probably uh, later <laughs> in uh, following our uh, upcoming kill counts. Had 30 humans, or humanoid aliens, that were killed. That is, if I include the random polar ice guard I forgot to count in Critters 2. Yes, I read your comments. Still, this pales in comparison to the 1,697 Critters whose balls were busted across all five movies. Now I'm done with ball jokes. I'll give the golden chains. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um... Skill, best skill. <sighs> the first ones were kind of cool because they were like. It showed how the critters were replicate. I can talk. Uh, duplicate. I'll say this <laughs> anyway. Uh, and yeah, it was kind of cool. So maybe one of them. And the lamest. I feel like the mm, just a personal um, thought, but they could have done a call back to the first one with the the um, no, not the first one, but the the sequel with the the Critter Ball and have the the joke character uh being in a skeleton state so i think for wasted opportunity i would have given the, the yet to the uh, the bronze chainsaw to this one but i feel like it won't be the case with uh, for Soran. but let's it's all for coolest kill to the telephone repairman yeah, mainly see. because of his reaction Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. That wasn't, uh, what I thought. <laughs> okay, yeah. Plus, but, you know, yeah, I feel bad I for giving the Del Machete and Tremors to those phone workers. Telephone repair industry deserves better. Del Machete for lamest hmm. kill goes to Gregory Sachs. I know yes. there were plenty of crappy Gold off screen kills, but this one pissed me off the most because it's a freaking critter ball. And it is a crime not to show us that wiggly skeleton Yay. after me. And the Bounty Booty Award for Best I Critter Kill even goes called to, the... I don't know. This one? Sure. Okay. I, I don't care anymore. And that's it. Critter's Attack came out in 2019 and is, you know, not great. But still head and shoulders above the Go90 abortion that was a new binge. Don't even get me started. I'm not covering it. So thus ends our time with the Krites. And me as your host since James returns next week with Urban Legend. And without a TARDIS to walk off into, I'm just gonna say, until we meet again, I'm a man who once opened for Harold Ramis at a synagogue comedy show, and this has been
been the kill count. There we go. Another reign of Zorin has ended on the channel and hopefully has not ended the channel. Again, just like the Tremors kill counts, I was able to get cameos from even more of the Dead Meat team. We had writers Tim and Jeremy, brand manager Ben and his Star Wars love, executive assistant Fiona, producer MK, Dead Meat researcher Emma, and editors Bree, Josh, and even Sarah, the newest editor. So I got everybody. Didn't forget one single person. God damn it, Zorin. I'm always odd utensil left out. Did you hear something? Anyway, I'm always honored to be a guest host on The Kill Count. It means a lot guy. to me. I wouldn't be able to do this without you and your support as well. So thank you everyone who uh, enjoys Uncle Zorin helping out The Kill Count from time to time. And I know the Kyoto Brothers- No worries around your ghoul in my book. Others were not involved in this film, but the Critters franchise as a whole would not exist without them. So I'd like to leave you with some words of wisdom from the Three Stooges of Visual Effects. Be good people! Thank you so much, you wonderful humans. <laughs> cool, the, you made them. It's like, it's cool. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, yeah, that was something. Wasn't as bad as the the, um, the other one, the fourth one. Uh, but uh, like you said, uh, it was kind of some off things in there um i appreciate the that there were more kills in this one uh the effects were cool too uh, at least they went for the practical effect instead of uh, cg and can appreciate that and um, yeah, um, a few good, a few, uh, good kills, I guess, and, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the characters were meh, and, yeah. That's about it. But it was a fun little franchise to go to. Um, like I said, I've only seen the the two first, or at least, at least the first one, and I barely remember what uh, the second one was. But uh, after watching the I mean, I feel like I might have seen parts of it, but that's about it. The the three others didn't know nothing about them. Uh, but yeah, uh, was more fun. Um, yeah. Um. Also, I, also, I think it's kind of fitting and goes well with uh, Zoran's style of uh, going through at kill count. Uh, the way he did with Remorse was kind of in the same vein as this one with more like flashy things and, and the costumes and the, the, the little skits and everything and not that James doesn't do skits he does too but yeah see what I mean um yeah so anyway um if you made it this far into the video thank you for watching leave a like and a comment tell me what you think about the movie and uh, uh don't forget to 
uh, support and subscribe to then meet the links will be in the description for the video and the channel don't forget to watch the video yourself to support them it's important and uh, yeah um, uh, I know uh, James uh, uploaded a uh, a new kit count at the moment of this recording for the Scream 6 but I won't uh, do a re uh, reaction to it because I haven't seen the movie yet and I kind of want to <laughs> and I don't want to be spoiled by it or anything and I have no idea if it's a good or bad movie I heard a few things but I'm not not too many uh, and yeah I kind of love the, the Scream franchise so yeah anyway um, yeah so um, today it's Friday at the moment of the recording of this video and uh, we'll do um, um, watch a long stream uh, Sunday for a VTuber um, 3D showcase for all the lives second generation uh, second an Indonesian brand uh, Second generation for the Indonesian branch of Full Life. That's that's what I want to say, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do Sunday and next week. I'll do another Heartbound stream uh, Friday and uh, something else Sunday. I'll see what I want to do. But I definitely want to add more streams and more stuff um, during the week and that's why I kind of want to dumb down the reactions too and uh, mostly for my animations because I want to uh, focus more on that aspect of my channel which was the priority at the, at the beginning but since I started to do VTubing uh, kind of kind of been obscured a little bit which is kind of sad in a bit but in a way but uh, yeah I mean my Bowser family videos get some recognition and that's fun uh, those are always fun to work on and yeah um, so that's about it and uh, yeah uh, the next recorded video uh, I'll, I'll want to probably do a few of Ross videos um, during the weekend so that might come out like yes uh, tomorrow or something like that and maybe Sunday in the afternoon maybe and that's about it um, so after that it will be less frequent but depending on what uh, comes out and what looks fun to react to. and also um, I'm thinking re uh, recommendations and suggestions so if you want some me to watch something but clear that you want me to react to uh, leave them in the this in the commentary and uh, yeah comment I mean anyway <laughs> um, and yeah that's about it so I'm gonna go uh, rest a little bit and I have uh, 
the things to do tonight so i will see you in the next video and bye bye for now